Okay. Good evening, everybody. I'm uh, glad to see that uh, some of you are still uh, here and uh, awake. I hope you had a good day so far. Um, I'm going to talk about um, how to work with uh, interactive data sources in your applications. And I'm going to focus on Micronode, which is a um, Java-based uh, web application framework for microservices. I'm sure you've uh, had the opportunity to uh, watch uh, Graham's talk this uh, uh, morning, or afternoon, sorry. And I, th I find it a very compelling uh, framework to work with uh, microservices and so. I'm basing a lot of this about uh, reactive streams, which is another um, well, it's an established uh, technology. It's been around for some years, and it's uh, gone through a couple of iterations. And it, it's a it's a mature um, technology that tries to uh, deal with the problem of how to get data around without um, flooding everybody with. Uh, uh, congested networks or uh, overloaded clients or uh, servers that are, have poor response times. Just a show of hands, how many here have worked with the reactive streams? Some. How many here have worked with Micronode? A few. Um, and I think I'll just go right ahead. Obviously, I, I'm using Micronaut. There's, I have a bit of a groovy background, and um, well, I could have obviously used Spring Boot or uh, Vertex or something similar to that. But I like the uh, the, the mix Micronaut gives between something that's rabbit to develop in and something that's also uh, engineering-wise sound and and especially the short startup times and and the uh, the low memory footprint is is really good. That was a third of my slide deck. <clears throat> so uh, we're going to start uh, working on an application here. And uh, we need something that uh, is going to generate a lot of traffic and stuff. And we'll have to work with it. And we'll have to reduce it down to something else that we can use and present. And it's not just a, like, three-tier boring application that puts stuff into a database. This is something that's interactive-ish. Um, so I'm thinking, what could be more natural? We are in Europe than to try to help the people doing the uh, European Song Contest to make a voting uh, system. So uh, I've installed Micronauts uh, CLI, and this is uh, very useful. You can get it using SDK Man. Um, and we'll use that to uh, to create our voting uh, system. So I'm just creating the app. Is that legible? Oh, that's great. Sorry. Now, uh, I think there's only one rule about live coding demos. It's that don't do live coding demos. So since I've already violated that rule, um, We'll see how it goes. <coughs> That's interesting. <laughs> well, I don't know why it created that folder. Sorry, I just chose a new name. If, if everything fails, I'll just fall back to my, my fallback application. I hope that's fine with you. Um, uh, there's a little uh, snag in the current version of Gradle that uh, doesn't play well with um, the, uh, uh, the, the the Gradle version in use. Doesn't uh, play well with uh, reloading in um, in Micronaut or probably other places that they use. Uh, uh, annotation processing uh, a lot. So uh, I'm just going to downgrade uh, Gradle from 5.5 uh, five to 5.3. Five um, I used this um, 
feature, the live, uh, the file watch feature. So I can just say run. I know it's dash T, but I'm just showing you. Cool, we've started our app server, which doesn't do anything yet. I'll just um, bring up uh, a code editor. And um, I've started using this uh, quite a bit instead of one of the heavier uh, IDEs. Because the really neat part about it is that it's actually uh, quite a lot of um, Eclipse on the uh, on the back end side of the language server protocol. Um, I like that. Okay, so uh, we should start accepting some uh, some votes for our application, and I'm sure that um, that somebody else is going to be uh, developing a. Um, uh, like an app for us so that people can vote and, uh, and and do that. But we're not doing that today. We're just doing the back end. So to, um, to, to vote, uh, we'll add a controller. Sorry. We forgot the package declaration. I was really surprised to see how many, how many things they have running here. Um, so to vote, people will have to post some data to us. For, the, uh, for this example, I'm going to just allow them to post anything and then actually put the payload into the query um, elements. Arrange our inputs, and um, as the very first version, we'll just uh, do good old sysout. Sorry, that was in it. That's why they have the first rule of live coding. So we just need to return something. <laughs> right. So this will um, allow us to do uh, anything, po post any song, and um, So it's running. We'll just need a client. Just one at a time will do. Let's say that somebody went and voted for song number six. That was a Danish song. It was Martin. Um, yeah, he voted for song six. It came out over here. Um, now. What's really interested is that we, we need to see what the results are, because that's what they're always saying and the results of the whatever jury are, but, but this is the popular vote. So we need something like this. So, oh, that, that was the Danish song again. Um, so uh, to do that, we'll have to uh, aggregate all these results and, um, and push them out to the clients that are, uh, are listening. Um, so to do that, we should, well, use the uh, the inputs that we're giving in the uh, from the client, and um, 
combine those into a, a topic that we can then serve to the client. How to connect to the client is a major issue in making these kind of uh, interactive applications. Yes, we could use um, uh, uh, sorry, uh, WebSocket. WebSocket is a neat and uh, very versatile um, technology, but for this case, I'm going to be using Service Sent Events. They have the advantage of being um, uh, more supported in the browsers, actually, and also in the in middle boxes, um, and pretty neat to work with, or very simple to work with. In this case, uh, we should be um, sending some data to back to the client. So how do we go about that? Well, we could start by um, we should be defining our data. I'm going to cheat. Here's a vote. It's very simple. And the vote controller can then create a vote um, very easily. So now we have votes. Uh, with the vote in hand, we can make um, a processor for votes. A processor is a kind of uh, reactive um, stream doohickey that can be posted to and be subscribed to. So it's like a, a both a both a, a both ends at the same time, and we can post to that from uh, any thread that we want as long as we make sure to to serialize it. So uh, we'll do that. We'll make a uh, vote processor, which uses um, this uh, publish processor, which is um, which, which which can do this to publish uh, to to various uh, feeds, and we'll make it to serialized. So that means that when and and it's a it's a processor of votes. So it's an uh, it, it it's a reactive stream that's producing votes. And we can feed it the vote as simple as um, there we go. It still says the same, and since nobody is actually subscribing to these votes, it doesn't really matter. Uh, what happens with them. But we need to uh, see what's coming out of the votes. We could, we could start by just uh, looking at the data uh, as they come in, and they can then leave again. Uh, so we can produce a few flowable of uh, votes just by, um, oops, sorry, just by uh, returning that, and uh, we'll have an endpoint to uh, to to get us uh, those. And <coughs> so this is the uh, service and event I was talking about, SSE event. Um, We just need this. So once we have this handy, um, oh, we need to map it, obviously, to an event. That should fix it. Mm -hmm. And it's already deployed. 
So now with that, we can uh, ask our dear Carl to... Um, but yes, so we'll be posting events to that and we can see it pop out here. Uh, in this case, it works. Actually, usually you have to provide the, the dash n to make sure that it doesn't buffer. But uh, we have our events coming in, and um, well, it's the subset. That's not a very useful thing. I can I can try to. Oh, sorry. I'll just try to switch to the fuller application. This is basically the same thing, and if we, uh, th this is the same thing, but using a HTTP, sorry, uh, HTML client to uh, produce uh, some output for us, so that if we uh, post to that application, which conveniently has the same um, paths, it will produce that. So how does that work? Very, very simple. If if anybody is not familiar with uh, JavaScript, um, I apologize. If everybody anybody is familiar with JavaScript, I uh, apologize even more. Um, I'm what they call a uh, full Slack programmer. So um, basically, the the neat thing about SSEs is that you just connect uh, an event source and produce uh, put put a message handler on that, and away you go. So that's uh, very, very simple. So we don't have to find the flavor of the month um, front end framework just to do this. However, if we were to do, if we were to go a bit heavier on it, let's say we bombard it with uh, my votes for the Danish song, it will eventually, oh sorry, I'm using um, Bombardier, which is a Go-based uh, stress testing tool. It should eventually fail. I hate when that happens. It didn't fail. Um, well, the thing is that we have um, we have a relatively slow client here. We could make it even slower if we use this one and then try to rate limit it. I think my uh, computer is running out of uh, uh, sockets. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, well, short, short. Uh, well, basically, what what was supposed to go wrong here, and I can't really explain it right now is that, oh, sorry, I can explain it. I'm, I'm taking the, I'm using the, the hardened uh, pre-built application and not the, um, not the one I was just constructing for you. So here is the 
simpler version. And here is our attempt to break it. Well, what should happen here is that when you have a hot data source in a, in a reactive environment, that means that it cannot uh, get processed as fast as it wants to be processed. And since then we have it. And since we have a client that's uh, slow, I'm limiting the rate of how fast we get these uh, events. We didn't even get any. Um, that means that it's uh, it's going slow. So, um, uh, sorry, it, that, that means that it, it tries to buffer, and it should only buffer so much because otherwise we'll have an application that runs out of memory. So, what you can do in a reactive stream is basically say, how do we deal with uh, when there's too much data? And in this case, these are just events, and this is just a, a snooping operation, so um, we can just say, get rid of them, and only take the uh, the latest, and we do that in a, in a reactive um, stream by saying uh, on back pressure drop. So the back pressure in is when the server has more data to send than the client uh, can can get. Um, yeah. Next thing up is that we want to combine these data somehow. We want to make sure that all the individual votes are counted together and uh, make up some kind of result or intermediate result, because this is the control room where Jan Ola Sand is uh, counting up all the votes. And uh, we'll be doing this by using some of the stream um, uh, combiners. And so in this case, we have a vote processor, the one that we got before, that takes the raw vo votes in. We just map that, so we only take the song number out. We, uh, we buffer them into time slices of 100 millisecond so that we don't have to count and sum each individual one of them. Instead, we, we divide them up into these slices and then filter. Um, yeah, we only take the, the slices where, we, where there's uh, some data. We map that into uh, basically a hash map of song and count. And then finally, we use the scan operator, which um, is like a reduce. So it starts with a nothing, and then it uh, combines each individual map of sums, so that it takes uh, the. We have a map of song containing song one and song five, and then we put them together, and that it has a map of one and five with their respective counts. And if they, if there's a if there's a collision, so both uh, sets have um, the map of uh, one and a map containing five, it uh, adds it together. So this is just uh, standard uh, Java collection uh, or stream um, processing. Uh, we just snoop. We should not, not snoop that. And um, finally, we publish. And publish is saying that this stream has to go out to a number of individual recipients. So um, it will it will tee the stream off there. It will not be um, one to one uh, communication between the the um, the backend and and any observer. It it sort of spreads it out to the different uh, observers downstream. And the different observers downstream are the ones that that want our uh, results. Finally, there's a. Well, we won't get into that. So basically, this is uh, the the uh, the stuff I was doing before uh, in the uh, directly in the um, uh, controller. That's not supposed to go into the controller. I've put that into a, a separate vote manager. And the good thing about that is that it makes it a lot easier to test. So we have these uh, tests that can say that if you if you make a vote manager and you just um, don't post any votes to it, you get no values and have no errors. Um, if you do post a vote, then 
it's not terminated and it has one value. If you uh, if we post multiple votes, that means we can uh, check to see if the results are uh, are as we wanted to. In this case, we post four votes, um, mostly for some, uh, mostly for song number seven, Hey Na Na Na, and. Um, we also do this, uh, we, we could make a real scheduler and actually have to wait in our test case and to wait uh, 100 milliseconds to make sure that the window has been um, uh, consumed and uh, calculated on, but that would be a bad practice because it, like if the test server was busy, then you wouldn't be able to see the results at the, at the uh, we'd, we'd have uh, flaky tests. So instead, what you do here is, that when we construct our vote manager, we give it a scheduler, and that's a test scheduler. So this, the test scheduler um, is then able to tell the streams processing pipeline how to deal with time. In this case, without waiting, we just tell the streams processor to say, hey, time's, time is flying, 99 milliseconds. And we should still be assu assuming that there aren't any um, results coming out. And then we ju wait just one more millisecond, and then the first round of results is coming out. And that's uh, then we uh, then we just check that we get the right results. And the good thing about using uh, Visual Studio Code is that the, the tests run a lot faster than IntelliJ. <clears throat> So, so we can test our um, using this uh, these test subjects and test uh, um, schedulers. We can actually test that our reactive code is is working. So finally, we get to the point where we can um, combine these data. I must have stopped this one. There we go. So this is more or less the same code as before, only it's using uh, D3 to make a graph. Uh, but somewhere down here, well, it loads the songs and uh, and, and makes this, uh, this graph uh, thing. But somewhere down here, we actually set up uh, the event source, just as before. We set up an event source that does uh, summing. Let's see if I can uh, get that up here. So I'll just make a vote. I'll try to vote for song number number one in this case. And over here it generates the sum of that the song number one has one vote. I can do it again, and it has two votes. Or I can make um, Bombardier make uh, a lot of votes. In this case, uh, we'll just try see what happens with 100,000 votes for um, for this. And see, this d data over here is rate limited, so it, it doesn't update uh, that fast. And on it, it, it's actually also cheating a little bit because uh, the operating system has quite big buffers for uh, for standard sockets, so you can't always rely on this. But it, it will eventually. Oh, I gave it a million. Sorry. So what's going on over here? Well, it's just gradually growing. I'll see if I can. Uh, oh, time is very close to running out. Um, sorry. I'll just uh, try to demonstrate that if I vote for a different song, it would also climb up over here. If my system is not totally running out of resources at this time. Well, 
This one is calculating the sums. I don't know why this one's not. Uh, it's, yeah, the browser's down. Okay, so um, there it goes. New browser, more interactivity. So, so these are the uh, live results uh, coming in, being combined in in the uh, in the application. And obviously, this is not how we would solve it uh, for real. We would use something that's durable. And we might some, use something that's uh, distributable. But for uh, but for demonstrating how these things, these techniques can work, and how you can actually get interactive stuff into your browser, this is all you need um, for for uh, smaller things. We could also stuff this data into um, Kafka, which is actually happening. So that's why one of these, uh yeah, there it is. That's uh, Kafka output running, uh, or, or the uh, the, um, the the topic, uh, the data from that, uh, because that's where you would want to sta store all these, and then st also store all the sums, so you would have a, a, a good result and not be able to uh, and be able to to recover if uh, something went horribly wrong while Europe was voting. Um, I don't know, I don't have time for too many questions. Or anybody have anything they would like to ask? The time is up, sorry. So, no questions? In that case, I'll say uh, never forget the first rule of live coding. And I hope you enjoy uh, DevOps. <laughs>